Hello friends, welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. We are again with the Airbus H135 helicopter and we are currently parked at a helipad in Paris. So after the World Update 4, I thought having a look at Paris, also visiting the helicopter with its new version 0.8.4 will make good sense to everybody and that's what we are doing today first we'll look at what has changed with the helicopter and then we'll take off take a look at Paris and we'll use Bush Talk Radio for a small audio tour while we fly around Paris and um, see how it looks from above so without further ado let's jump into the cockpit and let's start take a look at the helicopter and what has changed with the new version, there are a number of changes. I have my co-pilot here, as you see. Um, remember the, the battery switch was tied to this heading 2 switch, so it has changed with the new version. In fact, it's at the overhead panel now, right here, where it says battery. So let's turn it on. This will supply power to the aircraft and the screens will come on. We still have the EFP here and the menus have changed a little bit. Let's switch to SVS to have a better view. On the EFP now you have a doors page where you can open the front doors. Also from here you just click spot but also from the tablet. If I go outside you also have the option to open the middle doors and then you also have the option to open the back doors as well so very good change here thanks to the developers for thinking about this let's close the front door for now and over here on this misc page it has a still image of the back where you see the cargo compartment and the doors open and when you close it it changes to a closed door so this is still a still image not an external camera view but it is a good addition and fun um, what else so the autopilot is here now and we have an auto hover mod which we can look when we are above Paris it shows the trims uh, it shows the altitude course heading uh, and then the autopilot controls are here. You also have the option to control the spotlight which is uh, at the nose and you can as you see that's turned on now we can turn it and switch it around. You also have the option to control the interior interior lights and the exterior lights from here like the cabin lights we have a cabin light now which I think is not quite visible because it's not that dark. We have the landing light, taxi light, strobe, beacon and nav lights. Uh, you can turn it on, on and off from the tablet. There's also a config page. Parking pay, park brake, front doors can also be removed. If you take a look, now we have no doors on the aircraft if you want to fly like that. The windscreen over here is for the wind, uh, the rain effects. Right now it's not working quite well, so you have to remove the windscreen when you are flying under rain, rainy conditions. Rear tablet, this is something fun actually. Let's turn it on and see what it looks like. If I go to the back seat, now you can do a sightseeing trip as you can control the autopilot from this tablet while sitting at the back of the aircraft and enjoy the scenery from your window and look around so that's that's what it is and you can turn it on and off from here radio panel is here transponder is here let's throw in our standard transponder code We'll turn on the altitude reporting. We are not using ATC bus just to demonstrate. And there are some triggers here. It's cold and dark, ready for takeoff, shutdown engines. 
and also the autopilot panel is here can be found here as well we have some timers we have the flight plan uh, direct to procedures so on and so forth that are displayed here we have an altimeter standby altimeter and this all now starts to change the barometric pressure but I will always do what I do and cheat and press B key to set the auto um, set the barometric pressure and I think those are all the changes as far as I remember and I didn't think that I would love to fly a helicopter but I am sort of digging it right now the flight model is also here basic where you don't get the torque effect from the propeller advanced all the effects from the engine and wind is here so you need to control the rudder and whatnot and the xbox is a reduced sensitivity version of the basic we'll stick to the advanced and see how how much i learned i'm still not claiming that i am the best helicopter pilot out there but it's 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 okay to try try so let's fire her up uh, we'll need some fuel pumps we'll turn the pedal heat prior to takeoff battery is on and there are no other switches other than the lights external lights that which you can control from here too so we'll turn on the nav and beacon because we are about to start the engines check left check right there are nobody around so we'll flick the switch and start the left engine first while it's starting let's go to the autopilot synchronize our heading and set ourselves for maybe a thousand feet altitude if we end up using the autopilot it is still loud inside the cabin and we have the doors open so let's go and shut the doors shall we middle doors are closing now as you see and our co-pilot is doing nothing waiting for us to take off I have my track IR paused at the moment. I will turn unpause it when the engines are running, and then we'll use track IR to look around after takeoff. This helipad in the middle of Paris can be found under Flight Sim TO. I'll post the link to the description field of the video. We have the left engine idle. Let's start the right one. Uh, if you want to download the helipad, because it makes it so much easier to fly about Paris. Well when you take off from this helipad. There are multiple helipads under Flight Sim TO, but I'll specifically post a link to this one if you want to go and check it out. While this is starting, let me go and check the sound settings and make that change so that it's not loud inside the cockpit. We'll do it to headphone simulation. That will muffle the uh, cockpit noises a little bit and yeah so we are waiting for the second engine to become idle and we'll remove the collective a little bit to get some numbers at the torque uh, rather than axis and thanks to a comment to the last video i now know the names of the controls the the throttle is called collective in a helicopter and the stick is the psychic and the pedals are anti-torque pedals where you have to um, counter the torque effect uh, when you have the advanced mode for the flight model over here and the other change that they made is they added some animations to the propeller pitch as you see it's moving now as I move the controls so this is an addition to so both engines are idle, let's engage the FADEC for flight and let's try to first hover and then take off to see how well we can maintain our position and don't get, uh, don't hit the, the wires here or the fence and then the pole right there, light pole. Still using live weather, 9 knots of wind coming from behind so it's better for us to turn around and uh, make it a headwind but I will adjust uh, and add the throttle slowly and I think around 34-35% we'll start to see the nose moving so I'm applying some rudder to maintain that 
um, or counter the torque effect. And at 39%, I think she lifts off the ground like so, and we are going to try to power and not move around. Okay, so we are still moving, so it's really hard to power when you are at advanced mode, but very, very minimal stick movements to keep her steady and not move around and I have to apply more rudder to stop the nose from turning and after we stabilize like so not that much but we'll increase the power and then start lifting her and we will apply rudder as we increase the power because the torque effect will get greater as we climb so we are climbing now I think we will go like 85-87% and then there we go let's avoid that white light pole and um, apply more rudder to keep the nose straight and then pitch down for gaining some speed I will at this point unpause the track AR for us to take a look at Paris and let me check if we are logged into Bush Talk Radio we are okay so we should hear Bush Talk Radio talking about the points of interest as we get close so let's let's pitch more and climb to a thousand feet I have to say the city looks great after the update look at that and even with my graphics card which is not the best one out there I have a GTX 1070 Ti it is still looking, looking astonishing uh, and it's great so we'll turn to the left and that's where the Eiffel Tower is I believe I might be wrong though we'll see we passed 1000 so we have to adjust the collective and get ourselves back to a thousand feet and we'll fly like this and maintain the heading as much as we can so as you gain speed you don't have to apply that much rudder it helps with uh, the heading but you can't just completely let them go uh, when you have enough speed to move forward Alright, the speed keeps increasing, so I'm going to cut the throttle just a little bit to maintain a healthy speed. And then we will turn towards that, uh, I think it's a church. And we'll see if the Bush Talk radio will start speaking about where we are passing over. There we go. Nice and steady maintain the speed, maintain the altitude and we are we are off to a good start I guess it's fair to say the Pantheon is a monument in the fifth arrondissement go. of Paris it's talking France. about the Pantheon it is located in the area known as the Latin Quarter standing atop now the I'm gonna maintain the altitude at, at 1100 Pantheon, which was named after it. and maybe just the go to the autopilot synchronize the altitude and heading move to altitude and heading hold just to focus on navigation look around without worrying about the helicopter however lived to see the church completed by the time the construction was finished, the French Revolution had started. Okay, now we can, I believe, turn a little bit more to the left. ...to transform the Church of St. Genevieve into a mausoleum for the remains of distinguished French citizens, modeled on the Pantheon in Rome, which had been used in this there way since the 16th century. The first Pantheon eyes was Honoré Gabriel... The city looks great. ...de Mirabeau, although his remains from were above. removed from the place a few years later. And my the FPS is not great, I'm getting 24, 25 at the moment century, because of the scenery, in but it, the it looks great if you ask me. Its exclusive use as a mausoleum in 1881. 
The placement of Victor Hugo's remains in very nice, very nice, and I'm becoming a big fan of this helicopter. To be honest with you, changes in the building's purpose resulted in modifications of the pediment's decoration, the capping of the dome by a cross or a flag, and some of the existing windows were blocked up with masonry to give the interior a funereal atmosphere, which compromised somewhat Soufflot's initial attempt at combining the light. Oh my God! This is this is great. Principles. And that's the Eiffel Tower. Let's turn around and pass around the Eiffel Tower, shall we? Eiffel Tower, I guess, is the right pronunciation. There it is. Gorgeous. We'll keep turning using the autopilot. And that's the... I think that's downtown Paris. We'll check it out after the Eiffel Tower. But all in all, I think this update is great. The, the city looks uh, much more different. And uh, pleasing to the eye, I would say. It's... Yeah, it's great. So we're getting close to the Eiffel Tower. The Arc de Triomphe de l'Etoile, translated as Triumphal Arch of the Star, is one of the most famous monuments in Paris, France, standing at the western end of the Champs-Élysées at the center of Place Charles de Gaulle, yeah. formerly named Place de l'Etoile, the Etoile or Star of the Juncture formed by its go. 12 radiating avenues. The location of the Arc and the Plaza is shared between three arrondissements, 16th, 17th and Shall we try the, the Outer Hour at some point, maybe at the Paris downtown, to take a look at the city from above while we are not moving around? French victories and generals inscribed on its inner and outer surfaces. Yeah. Beneath its vault lies the tomb of the unknown soldier from World War II. Okay, we will turn around. the central cohesive element of the Axe Historique. The Arc de Triomphe was designed by Jean Chalgrin in 1806. Its iconographic program pits heroically nude French youths against bearded Germanic warriors in chain mail. It set the tone for public monuments with triumphant patriotic messages. Three weeks after the Paris Victory Parade in 1919, Charles Godefroy flew... Looks like our co-pilot is enjoying the scenery as well. ...with the event captured on newsreel. We'll turn more. And head to the downtown Paris. Where is the Eiffel Tower? I lost track of it. I think it's to our left. Yeah, right there. So we're still turning towards it. But I think it's a great way of enjoying the scenery in the simulator. Uh, being able to fly the helicopter. I hope we don't hit that building though. It's looking a little bit dangerous. We are turning very slowly. I might apply some rudder to make us turn faster. Is a 210 meter office skyscraper located in the Montparnasse area of Paris, there you France. Go. Constructed from 1969 to 1973, it was the tallest skyscraper in France until 2011, when it was surpassed by the 200. And pass around the Eiffel Tower one more time. It remains the tallest building in Paris outside of the La Défense business district. As of February 2020, it is the 14th tallest building in the European Union. There you go. Nice and easy. By architects Eugene Baudouin, I hope you guys don't get motion sick because I'm using the track IR. Let me pause it for a second. Built on top of the Montparnasse, Bienvenue Paris Metro Station, the building has And use my mouse to move the view. The 56th floor, 200 meters from the ground, houses a restaurant wow. called Le Ciel de Paris, and the terrace on the top floor are open to the public. Great view the right city. there. The view and we're headed to right in downtown Paris. Can be seen taking off from all the That's the arch. There are a the lot of historical buildings that you can see around, which is great. 
French urban climber oh, announced passing chance to say using only his bare hands and feet and with no safety devices of any kind scaled the building's exterior glass and steel wall to the top twice in 1995 and in 2015 turn left a little bit more was repeated by Polish climber Marcin Bannert in 2020 from the middle of the way he was followed by a lifeguard on a rope but Marcin refused to connect a safety rope and yep. climb to the top without any help the tower's simple architecture, large proportions and monolithic appearance have been often criticized for being out of place in Paris's urban landscape. As a result, two years after its completion the construction of buildings over seven stories high in the city center was banned. It is said that the tower's observation deck enjoys the Let's most take a look outside, shall we? Paris because it is the only What a stunning view, guys. Near Paris in France. The first stone was laid wow. in early 2011 by the main contractor Basilica. I don't know what to say. Latin this looks great. Completed in 2013, it is located in the municipality of Courbevoie and contains offices. All these buildings, they just look so real. And faceted facades allow the tower to Even stand with my graphics settings, I can't stop thinking how it would look like um, if I was at ultra settings. Anyway, let's see if we can find the the location we left. In the office interiors. In addition, Tor Carpe Diem is the first to exceed uh, France's Haute Comité environmental standards and also to achieve LEED CS Platinum certification. We'll go here, shall we? Let's see if we switch to nav mode now. The helicopter should start directing us. To that airport and then we will try the auto hour and try to land when we get there it's eight miles away not too far away so we should be able to uh, get there and we need to change the nav source to FMS oops there we go that's what I forgot to do a little bit uh, shaky bumpy movement there sorry about that but now we are turning around for our landing to find that airport and try to land okay I think it's over on that side of the city according to the needle should be right to our left somewhere there so we'll see but I think I'm quite happy with the world update 3 uh, four, I'm sorry. Everything looks great. The performance is improved. Even with 25 FPS, I can still play the simulator with my uh, medium end graphics card. But all in all, I think I think great. So let me unpause the track AR and try to keep my head steady so that I don't make you guys motion sick. That's the Eiffel Tower, back there. That's the Paris downtown, I would say. And these are the suburb suburbs of Paris, I believe. I haven't been to Paris in my life, so I'm just guessing uh, where we might be at. We are heading directly to the uh, destination I selected. And it is down below. We got five miles left. Is that the same helipad that we left? Could be. Could be. We'll see when we get there. We need to slow down though. We need to slow down and cut the speed so that we can enter to a hover mode when we get there. How how much distance we have? Four miles? Okay. And that's enough slowing down, I guess. And we are getting close. And as you see, the hover says speed exceeded, so we need to slow down 
and then enter. So we might uh, cut the or cancel the autopilot or turn off the autopilot, disengage the autopilot, you name it, and then take control to slow us down in about four miles. That's where we are heading, I guess. It's getting closer. Can we switch to the map to see where we are headed? Not that one, not that one definitely. I think this is the one. Hopefully we can identify the place. The needle is getting closer to the middle which tells me that we are getting close. 3.7 miles. This is going to be interesting, if you ask me. If it's a narrow field, if it's the helipad we left, it would be hard to land with my skills. We'll see. I still don't see where from the window. Can't see where where that place might be. And I haven't flew flew this flight before, so this is the first time you guys are flying with me. We got two miles left. I'm assuming that's somewhere here. Maybe that's the trip right there. Could be. We'll see. According to the needle, it's it on that side, and we should see it by now. We are like a mile away. Ah, interesting. Yeah, I think that's that strip right there. If you ask me, it looks like it. No, that's not a strip, that's a building. Okay, where we are going to land? Oh, that's the airport right there in front of my eyes. I didn't see it. Okay, let's let's take control and slow down. I'll pause the track IR so that my head movements doesn't affect anything. Pitch the nose to slow down and cut the throttle to about 45. We will slow down like so, and then we will turn around to here. And hopefully, we will be able to land. I'm trying to see where we are at. Okay, GTC available. Now you see it's active, so we are hovering. That's, that magenta dot is telling our attitude and when it's at the center that means we are hovering and not having any movements that's the uh, runway right there so we will cut power slowly and I have to apply some rudder to stop us from turning I guess so the helicopter is trying to hover as I cut throttle Now we should start descending slowly. Like so. There we go. I think we are descending now. We will keep hovering and then look for a spot for landing. That's water. We'll land to a grass field, shall we? When we get closer to the ground. We'll cancel the auto hover and then try to land somewhere reasonable. It looks like the auto hover is doing its thing, uh, as much as I can tell. It is, it is looking okay. We are getting close to the ground, so at this point, I think I can take control, find ourselves a spot. Yep. Okay. 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 I didn't expect that to happen. That's the rudder pedals, but we will, we will keep hovering manually as we get to the, closer to the ground and turn around like this and maybe we will just land to a piece of grass right around here. Okay, 
keeping that green dot in the center and as you get to the ground it becomes much more sensitive to joystick movements and I'm trying to keep it where it's at right now as you see it became much more sensitive and I have to apply a lot of control stick movements but we are almost on the ground I have to stop moving just to land like so maybe we can now cut the power and land there you go it wasn't too bad we landed in the middle of nowhere looks like to an airport I should have planned this better but just wanted to share the update with you guys and take a look at Paris together alright let's power her down this goes back to idle and you need to wait at idle for the engines to cool down a little bit before you turn them off so we will wait for the N2 to drop and then we will monitor the the M1 yep everything looks fine let's stay like this for a little bit and then we'll turn off the left engine and we'll turn off the right engine and then turn off the fuel pumps and maybe just open the doors to let people out if they wanna get some fresh air around here and we can open our doors too so that our co-pilot can get some fresh air too there you go guys this is the Airbus H135 version 0.8.4 for you we flew about, uh, about Paris for a little bit thanks for watching the video if you liked it please give me a thumbs up it helps uh, a lot to the channel and I will see you in the next video. I'm planning another video this week, which was a request for an RNAV approach with the Airbus A320. So we'll look into that uh, sometime later this week. And stay tuned for the group flight over the weekend. We are going to do some island hopping in Caribbean. And if you want to join, you are welcome to do so. I will post the details of the stream uh, on Thursday to you to the youtube channel and you will you will see when we will be doing it again thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video